the Honourable uh, Mr. Robert Arrigo, who's um, going to speak about uh, an initiative uh, which you are proposing to recover some um, of the damage that's been done to tourism here in Malta. Yes, I have. Um, uh, the position has been talking about many months now on the reduction of the potential electricity bills. Uh, we did mention 50% for the whole year. Uh, government has finally, after six months, said 50% on three months, cap. Um, and on Monday, last Monday, I myself led a press conference saying that at least there should be a, a two-month free of charge water which is more of a proposal that the government has finally accepted. It took six months of opposition saying this in every, nearly every first conference. We are glad that the government has, in part, accepted this in principle. Um, maybe the, the PM does not get credit for that, and maybe because it's in opposition, its proposals are rendered a bit stupid. But I think pressure has made the government come to its senses. And although it's a bit of a relief, because the, the situation is drastic um, and should have been coupled with drastic measures rather than a piecemeal measure, we've seen all piecemeal situations rather than a long-term situation. And the industry needs a long-term uh, situation up to March next year. And uh, your proposals are available online, I believe. People can look at your proposals, um, which included a lot of benefits to both businesses and citizens. Is that correct? Yeah. We actually worked all through August because uh, we saw August being a failure. Um, the whole July, August, September scenario um, was more complicated when the United Kingdom closed its doors to, because the United Kingdom gets us 35% of heads as arrivals, but in actual fact gets us about 55% of our total nights. Um, we missed that. That was a catastrophic situation that we've had. Um, unfortunately, um, the repercussions were straight away, and myself, together with, with the CAP, um, uh, thought out these proposals, which are possible, which are needed, which are vital, unless that will have more hotels closing down. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Arrigo. Thank you for your time today. Um, that was uh, another incentive. Um, what, uh, what I wanted to address also, Mr. Jweb, before we close this part of the programme, you've been appointed uh, recently to participate in a think tank for education. Um, how is that working out? And do you see children returning back to school oh. now in the new term? This is the hot question right now. <laughs> okay. Um, so... Way back in January, uh, I'll, I'll try and do this very fast, but there's a storyline to this. Way back in January, before COVID was a term we actually understood or knew about, the Chamber of Commerce issued an economic vision um, for the country, five years, 2020 to 2025, which is this document which lies in front of me, um, which talked about a number of initiatives that the country needed to take in order to enable a sustainable uh, uh, maintenance and growth of the national economy, given that what we had experienced in the last five years, which was great, it was positive surpluses and all, needed some attention to ensure that we do not correct what had been built. So this was really intended um, to address that. One of the main points then in January, before this came about, which uh, the 28 CEOs that contributed to this document, uh, together with myself uh, before January, was our lack of preparedness to have adaptable, flexible youngsters join our industry as this is developing into the technology, AI, big data, quantum physics world. So that's what this document said in general. 
here we are. Um, COVID now is a is a term which which is uh, which is uh, <laughs> which is well understood. Um, COVID will stay with us for quite a while, and uh, never before, never than now, have we realized how correct we were in January, but also realizing that our technology and preparedness to be able to teach our youngsters and engage our youngsters in a growth pattern, in a personality, in a, in a, in a complete uh, growth process has been so difficult because we're not prepared to do this. Um, so the think tank that the Minister for, for, the, for Education put together is really a result of the very strong voice we put in the overall economic vision and they engaged us to support the development of curricula for, to youngsters that would enable them to be, if you like, not only COVID ready, but also um, industry, new industry ready, which it isn't. There's a big gap today between what is being prepared in schools and what the industry is requiring um, mm -hmm. um, moving forward. And the gap is increasing by the day. We in the chamber have a number of thematics that are dealing exactly with this because we consider this to be an absolute priority. If we are really wanting to have our economy um, um, not only react to COVID, but also react to this gap that was ever increasing between preparedness and the need, then we need to get our hands dirty. Will schools open in, uh, in September and October? My answer is, I hope so. Um, I, I certainly knows. hope so for many, many, many reasons. One of them, of course, is the need for kids to go back to school. The need for kids not to have an ever-increasing gap in their preparedness, in their educational, social, and 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 and, and uh, you know overall development that kids expect, whether they are the age of four or the age of 24 at university, they all, all of these have their needs. If this doesn't happen. Then, uh, then we're going to, yes, have to resort to many other plans, which will be not as effective as having schools and classrooms reopen. Um, we are prepared better than we were in March, but not as uh, our, the effectiveness will not be as good as having schools open. Our numbers are still high. We are frankly looking at numbers dipping in September, thanks to the various measures that we are all taking um, since the last two weeks or so. If the numbers are low enough, if we have visibility of the health authority proposals on how schools will reopen, then we stand a chance. There are many other influences on, whether, on, on, on the rest of us, on whether schools open or not, not just the kids, but also the economy, the growth, but also uh, the ability for parents to actually work and produce. Parents can stay at home and take care of the kids. That is stressful in itself. We're all, not all born to be teachers. We have all understood um, the profession of teachers, not only from the passing on of information perspective, but also on the ability to engage and motivate and entertain kids, especially the younger uh, generation at, at home or at school. We really need to ensure that schools work because our economy, our our uh, uh, production needs uh, children to, to, to be attended by the professionals and that's teachers. So we are as Chamber of Commerce, we're reaching out to the MUTs of this world, to the MAMs, MAPHMs, MUMNs of this world uh, to ensure that we, are, we have understood the full picture and able to support the re-entry of children back to school in a sustainable manner. The last thing we want is for schools to open and then maybe have to close again. This, is, this would be a disaster. So we're really working to ensure that schools open in a sustainable, reliable manner that allows the country to develop in its economy, in, in its education, in its well-being, in the most uh, resilient of manners. It's very encouraging to hear that you're participating, I think. Thank you very much. I am with uh, Mr. David Schwereb and the Honorable Therese Komodini-Kakia, who's going to remain with me here. Thank you very much.